Hi, Russell with Gormax Pets here, along with a mesmerizing mass of Armadillidium vulgare magic potion. This stock was discovered by Jay Fiore. He sent some in unusual specimens to Kyle Candelian of RoachCrossing.com, who worked with those specimens, uh, selectively breeding them over time, not only for the uh, single gene recessive trait, the Dalmatian trait, that gives them the white body and the dark speckles, but he focused on increasing the amount of, of these yellow swirling patterns, and that is where the term magic potion comes from. It has since been applied to, confusingly, to other Armadillidium vulgare, and as well as to um, other species that have a similar visual appearance in certain morphs. But this is the original Armadillidium vulgare magic potion. I thought I'd use these today as I talk about how to select isopods for particular desired traits, like Kyle did here with these. If you find isopods in your colonies with an interesting trait, there are various ways you could select for it. In today's video, we'll talk about a couple of different methods. To help clarify why some of these procedures are necessary, here are two aspects of isopod reproduction we should review. Number one, most if not all isopods in the hobby can and do reproduce at a size far below the maximum. In order to collect female isopods from a mixed age culture that have not mated, they'll have to be very small. About one quarter the average adult size tends to be small enough for many species, and depending on the species it may even need to be smaller. Number two, once a female isopod has mated, she can and usually will produce multiple broods of offspring without needing to mate again. With those two concepts in mind, let's continue. Method one for selecting isopods is perhaps the most basic, and works best when you have a sizable number of isopods with the desired trait. Simply remove the isopods that don't have the trait you want, put them in a different bin. This is the method I used with my Armadillidium nasatum whiteout. When I got my initial stock, Kyle of Roach Crossing and Alan John had already done much of the work in uh, refining and isolating the uh, trait, which is just basically a pigmentless nasatum. But my colony still produced occasional wild types. Periodically, I just opened up the bin and looked carefully for any wild types and put them in a separate enclosure. Over time, this method yielded the desired result. It can take longer than some other methods, especially if you only have a small number of specimens with the desired trait in a bin full of isopods without it. Method two is a better method if you just have a small number of isopods with the desired trait or traits. You might start with just one gravid female. It's been done. Or a pair, or a dozen. You get the idea. The key difference between this method and method one is that instead of removing isopods that don't have the trait you want, you prepare a bin to which you only add isopods that have the desired trait. Assuming you're working with a single gene recessive trait, and the isopods were all too young to have mated with other isopods before you isolated them in their own bin, they should produce offspring with the traits you want. Even if some of them had mated with isopods lacking the trait before you isolated them, and it is again a single gene recessive trait, all of their descendants will be heterozygous for the trait. In other words, they'll carry a copy of the gene even if they don't visually express it. That way, when those heterozygous specimens mate with each other, you'll end up with some of their offspring, statistically speaking about 25%, that show the trait. Remove those offspring to their own bin as soon as it is clear that they exhibit the desired trait, so they don't end up mating with stock that lacks it. This method can be faster than the first method. It's basically the same one I used to produce my own cross between Porcelius scaber Spanish Orange and Porcelius scaber Dalmatian years ago. I also used it effectively when another morph of Porcelionides prunosus inundated my P. prunosus whiteout bin. If you're working with more than one trait, like I was with the Porcelius scaber cross I mentioned earlier, or with traits that are not single gene recessive traits, the basic idea behind these methods can still work, but with dominant traits you're likely to see quicker results, and if you're working with more than one trait, like Kyle was when he uh, isolated the Armadillidium vulgare magic potion, it might take longer. And as Kyle says, he's still refining this strain. I mean, it looks gorgeous the way it is, but he's still refining it, finding stock that that exemplifies the traits that he's striving for. So if you have questions, please let me know down in the comments, and thanks for watching. I post videos every Friday with live streams and shorts during the week as well.
please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for all notifications so you don't miss my next video.